Hello guys, once again welcome back to the Gatekeepers TV, of course, your number one sports podcast channel. Guys, straight to it, uh, we are on Premier League Match Week 32. But before we jump on to Match Week 32, allow us to have a preview or a review of Match Week 31. As you can see on the screen there, those were the results of Match Week 31. Of course, the last match of Match Week 31 which was played was Chelsea versus Manchester United, guys. What a thriller, what a game. A game full of roller coaster and fans were actually glued on their sets and they had different type of emotions by the time the match was ending. So the match started in the first half the match ended 2-2. In the second half Manchester United scored first to make it 3-2. When the, on the 90th minute Chelsea made a comeback and scored an equalizer through Cole Palmer. Then on the 101st Cole Palmer actually he was as cold as he can ever be. He scored the winning goal. So the match ended 4-3 courtesy of Chelsea grabbing their revenge against Manchester United. Liverpool on that night won by three goals to one against uh, Sheffield United. We saw Arsenal winning against Luton. We saw teams like Newcastle uh, drawing to Everton. Burnley also drew 1-1 to Wolves. Uh, West Ham and Spurs also drew 1-1. So that's it. On your screen those were the results so straight to it match week 32 guys it's also another great match week guys. so we are ready for it we are ready for this match week so straight to it we will be having an early kickoff in that in this match week so the early kickoff will be crystal palace welcoming manchester city at selhurst park the last time these two teams met guys the game ended in a 2-2 draw yes 2-2 draw we all remember Ulisse scoring that goal which made it end 2-2 so this time round as the two teams are going to meet remember in match week 31 crystal palace lost to bonamouth by one goal to nil to nil whereas man city were able to win by four goals to one Ooh. crystal palace were able to draw with man city 2-2 so as they face each other in this game week uh, the biggest question is who wants it more who actually can be able to to make it a win for them as i told you uh in match week 31 crystal palace who uh, lost their match against bonamont by one nil whereas man city won their match against 4-1 in a match which saw phil ford and scoring a hat trick so as they're going to meet guys this comes after pep rested uh, players like de bruyne and uh, haaland because of course on tuesday they will be having a champions league match against real madrid but that does not mean that they're going to be rested again in this match against crystal palace so i feel that this is a match whereby man city will be attacking it because they're also in contention for winning the Premier League now that Liverpool have been able to actually increase the gap together with Arsenal. So this is a match whereby guys straight to it, I'm going to give it to Man City to win it. So Man City to win it by three goals to one. The next match will be Aston Villa versus Brentford. Yes, Aston Villa lost their match of course against City, four goals to one. On the other side, Brentford lost their match in match with 31. Uh, they didn't lose, they drew with Brighton 0-0. So if the two teams are going to meet, they are, meet, they are meeting uh, at a time whereby uh, Aston Villa are trying to finish in the Champions League slot, whereas Bright Brentford are also trying to rise up and finish at least on the top 10 list of the Premier League. So in the first leg when the two teams met, Aston Villa were able to win it by 2-1. So now as they will be at Villa Park, I feel like Oli Watkins is ready, He's, uh, he should be back to play in this game. On the other side on, Bre on Brentford, we've seen that of late, um, Buemo has fully recovered and he's been getting some minutes and of course Umisa and uh, Tony, these two boys have been playing uh, good football. So if the two teams are going to meet, guys, allow me to go with Aston Villa to win it, but two goals to one. Everton to face Burnley. Yes, uh, Everton drew with the Newcastle uh, at St. Mary's. Uh, they drew by one goal to one. Uh, on the other side, uh, Burnley, Burnley, <laughs> Burnley also drew to Wolves, 1-1. One, one. In the first leg when these two teams met, we all remember very well, Everton were able to win by two goals to nil. Yes. So as Everton will be at Goodison Park inviting Burnley, I feel that uh, Everton will continue with that good streak. It's been long since Everton won a match and this is that night whereby they should be able to get that victory. So give it 1-0 for Everton. The next match will be Fulham versus Newcastle. Fulham are coming into this match after losing in match week 31 guys uh yes they lost in match week 30, 32 against nottingham forest by three goals to one uh on the other side newcastle as i've told you uh they drew uh they drew one one of course with everton so as the two teams are going to meet guys i feel like it's going to be a good fixture uh both fulham and newcastle are playing beautiful football um 
on this I feel like it's gonna be a good one. So Gordon will be back from suspension. We all remember the red card which he got. So he will be back in this match. So uh, this is a match whereby I feel like uh, I'm seeing a 2-2 draw. Yes, 2-2 draw for both teams. Luton to welcome Bonamoth. Yes. Uh, when I see this team, this game, I remember the first leg when the two teams met and Luton bungled an opportunity to win that match. We all remember by first half, Luton were three goals to nil. But in the second half, Bonamouth came and changed the game. It was a game changer. Yes, the match ended 4 3, courtesy of Bonamouth winning it. So Semenyo bugged a brace. Solanke was also on the score sheet. Uh, it is what it is. So as they're going to meet, I feel like Luton. Luton wants to bug a revenge. They played a good football, good game, but they they fumbled a little bit in their defense. That is what made Bonamouth to make a comeback. So having said that, I feel like Luton will be coming to make a point here. Yes, uh, they will be coming to make a point here, considering they lost 2-0 in match week 30, 31. And also, on the other side, Bonamouth are coming to this match having won against Crystal Palace by one goal to nil. Bonamouth, they are ascending. They are playing very well, so they are trying to climb up the ladder. But even with that, I feel like Luton will be giving them a run for their money. So this I'm going with a 1-1 one -one draw. Then Wolves to play against West Ham. Wolves versus West Ham. In the first leg when they met, of course, we all saw West Ham winning. West Ham won that game. Guys, it was 3-0. 3-0, I believe, yes. Uh, so if they're going to face Wolves, a team that drew in the in match with 31, uh, I feel like it's going to be a good game. We are talking at a time where Kudus is back. Kudus is officially back. Bowen is doing his great things. Susek, of course, is playing well. Moreno scored in the first leg when the two teams were playing, when Western played against Wolves. So I feel like it's going to be a great game. So this is a match whereby allow me to give it to Western to bounce back with victory. So 2-1. For me, then the last match on Saturday will be Brighton welcoming Arsenal. Uh, when Brighton played Arsenal in the first leg, we saw Arsenal winning by two goals to nil. Uh, we all remember Kai Havertz and Gabriel Jesus on the score sheet on that on, on that game. Arsenal currently are position two on the Premier League, so uh, they have a chance to actually capital, to go on top of the league before Liverpool plays Manchester United on Sunday. So if they win this match, they might go. They will go on top of the league. So the big question is, will Brighton allow them to have that liberty to win against them? Uh, for me, I feel like Arsenal are a team on form. Remember, they rested Saka in match with 31. So uh, Saka might be back in this match fully ready to play. So Brighton on the other side also, they are a team who can play well. They drew against... Uh, they drew in match week uh, 31, of course, guys, with uh, against Brentford. So I feel like they also have that... Uh, they are being stressed to win a match. But having said that, I feel like Arsenal are a team who can stop winning. So Arsenal to win this game by three goals to one. Uh, on Sunday, we have a Super Sunday. Uh, uh, we will be having the first match on Sunday, which will be Manchester United, uh, welcoming Liverpool. Yes, Manchester versus Liverpool. Uh, we all remember uh, Manchester United are coming into this game having played on Thursday against Chelsea and lost to and lost to Chelsea by four goals to three. On the other side, Liverpool played against Sheffield United and won by three goals to one. Uh, when the last time these two teams met, guys, in the Premier League, they drew nil nil. But before that, we all remember last season when the famous win for Liverpool of 7-0. We will always keep on mentioning this, guys. But immediately, the latest match which the two teams played in the FA Cup quarterfinals, uh, Manchester United were able to win against Liverpool. Uh, it was by 4-3, I believe. Yes, the extra time late winner from Mino, uh, which made Liverpool... Uh, to be eliminated from the FA Cup semi-finals. Uh, so that means that Manchester United booked their semi-finals uh, slot to play against Coventry, whereas Man City, who also qualified, booked their slot to play against Chelsea in the semi-finals of the FA Cup. So as the two teams are meeting to renew their rivalry once again, once again, this match is very special because Manchester United will be playing it with a lot of dedication considering that they are one of the team who wants to stop Liverpool from having an opportunity to win this season's Premier League because if Liverpool are to win uh, this season's Premier League they will actually equal the 20 Premier League titles which Manchester United have won so that's that's a bragging right which Manchester United doesn't want to escape them but 
Having said that, Liverpool on the other side also, they have a bone to chew with Manchester United, especially after Manchester United eliminated them, eliminated them from the FA Cup semi-finals. So, uh, this is going to be a difficult game, it's going to be a good game. Uh, considering that Manchester United will be having few players who are injured, uh, in the match against Chelsea, they were able to lose Veran and Johnny Evans, they are two centre-backs who are injured. Lisandro Martinez is also still injured. Uh, Casemiro, uh, doubtful, but yeah, he might still play. But uh, overall, I feel like most of the players are there, Hodgland, Rashford, um, yeah, Hodgland, Rashford are there, of course, and Bruno Fernandes. So Onana at the back post, I feel like they still have the team. On the other side, Liverpool, uh, the injury list uh, still the same, of course. Alexander Arnold uh, to continue will be missing uh, that may match. Alison Baker has been training with the team. Let's see whether he will make it in the squad. Um, on the other side, Trent, uh, not Trent, uh, Robertson has actually made it back to the squad. He had an injury, but he's officially back. Endo didn't feature in the match, uh, in the in the in the match against Sheffield, but chances are he might come back. Him coming back, basically, what that means, it means that Sobotslai must be going will be going back to the bench. So. Um, as these two teams meet, of course, overall, Manchester United have had has a better history against Liverpool. They have won more matches, I believe, 29 matches. Uh, this game has actually um, had 15 draws in the Premier League. So, uh, if the two teams are going to meet, it's going to be a rivalry at its best. So, for me, in this game, guys, without bias, I feel like Klopp will be coming for his revenge. In as much as Manchester United are mad, they are angry for losing it at the last minute or the last second against Chelsea, I feel like they still don't have anything against Liverpool. Liverpool will be coming back to grab their three points. So give Liverpool a chance to win by three goals to, to two. Yeah, then Sheffield versus Chelsea. The first leg, when Chelsea faced Sheffield at Stamford Bridge, Chelsea won that match by two goals to, to nil. And of course, your usual boy, the coldest boy in town, Cole Palmer, scored a goal. Nicholas Jackson also scored a goal. Um, remember, these two teams are facing each other and how they fared in match week 31. Sheffield lost 3-1 to Liverpool. Chelsea won 4-3 uh, against Manchester United. Chelsea needs these three points very, very, very much if they want to be catapulted from position 10 to a fair position. So I feel like the pressure is on Pochettino's team. They need to do what they need to do. Uh, so this is a game whereby I'm favoring Chelsea to be able to win it by three goals to one. No clean sheet. The last match in match week 32 will be Tottenham Hotspur versus Nottingham. Forest. Uh, Tottenham have a good record against Nottingham. They have been scoring goals against them and winning their matches, especially with clean sheets. Uh, this, come, this game comes amidst Nottingham Forest, having won their match against Fulham in match week 31 by three goals to one. Whereas on the other side, uh, Tottenham Hotspurs, uh, they actually wasted an opportunity to win their game against Fulham by allowing Fulham to equalize through Katsuma and the match ended 1-1. So I feel like the pressure in the, is on their side to be able to win it because they're also contesting for the top four uh, finish so that they can qualify to the Champions League. So having said much on this match, I feel like uh, it will be Son's time to score again in this game. So I'm going with Tottenham to score two goals to one. Yeah, so Tottenham will be winning. So guys, that marks the end of match week 32. Thank you for keeping it the Gatekeepers TV. So let's meet again over the weekday, Tuesday and Wednesday, as we will be discussing much more against the Champions League uh, quarterfinals. Keep it the Gatekeepers TV. Keep it here. As usual, I'm your super host at Dennis Ketong. See ya.